it's nice and soft. I'm going to draw out our mountain. And I'm, we can use chalk. We can use uh, dark paint. So I'm going to use dark blue, the phthalo blue paint on my liner brush. And I'm going to draw out the mountain. I'm going to look at the reference photo and have an idea what way I want the shape. All right. So I'm thinking it might be around here. We had a little line here, and then we got another one here. And then there's a tall one in the center. Okay, so then you come up to the tall one. Way up here, way up. And it's another pointy part up here. And it comes down on the back here. All right, so you can make any shape you want. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's another little one back here. And then we got another one here. And then it just comes down around this way. So, so there's your shape. See, as simple as that. Okay, so we'll go, we'll work with that. And now we'll make our squiggly lines, okay? So we got a little bit of a height up here. So we'll make a squiggly line here. And maybe another one. We're trying to get little point, little tops. And another squiggly line here. And one here. So the squiggly lines will help you get the shape you can always change it, so don't worry. Excellent. Let's use our fan brush to put on our paint. So we'll go with white, because we already have a bit of blue there. So on our fan brush, we'll put some white paint. And then we will start at the top of this squiggly line and start moving down. But use that squiggly line to keep you on that side. And we will add some more white up here just to get an idea where we want our most of our white, which is at the top. All right, so that's that. And then we'll do another one here. So as long as you follow that squiggly line, you'll get some nice shapes. We'll put shadows in now after. So we have another one here. So I'm just following the squiggly line. I'm not uh, too worried about anything else right now. And let's see, let's see right here. Good. Now your brush is dirty, but that's okay. Go back into your sky blue, the blue color here, the light blue, the lighter blue. I'm going to use that for a shadow. So we'll put some shadow in here. That'll separate those two there. And here. Use the corner of your brush, you'll find that it's hard to get into the smaller areas. And we will get uh, back here is another shadow. We'll, be going, we'll go over that again now in a minute. I just want to get some shadows. And we'll get some shadows back here. We're going on the other side now, so we need to go this way. This way and that way. All right, and this way. So go diagonally and follow the shape of the mountain. All right, now we're going to add some more white. That's our shadows. Add a little bit of a darker shade. I'm going to go with the phalo blue in the back here. I'm going to tap that in. All right. So 
and darken up some of the parts of your shadow. So if you want with a bit of phalo blue, let's try that. Just kind of experimenting a little bit. There you go. Good. All right. I'm going to put some white on my, I clean my brush off a little bit and I have some white on there. And I'm going to pull some of that white that's in front there. I'm going to pull that back here. But I want to keep those shadows, okay? But I just want it to look like it's going forward. And then some of it is coming into the back. I know it's hard painting mountains, but with practice, you'll figure out what way is easier for you. I'm just trying to bring back a little bit of that white there. Same with here. Still want to keep the dark. Okay. And get a little bit of shadow going on here. So you're kind of going back and forth with the blue and the white just to a little bit of shadow going on here. I'm going to shape up that mountain up here, okay? So let's see what we can do with that. Let's go in here with the white. Use the corner of your brush if it's hard to get at. It's better. Not too bad. Fan brush is nice to use. You can also use a palette knife, but some people are a little intimidated by palette knives, which I am one of them. <laughs> yeah. So we need a bit more white, just put it on there. Maybe it's a little bit in here. It's a nice little mountain. It's a nice little mountain. Yeah, so I think a little bit more white here and there. So just pick some spots that you think might need a little bit of a highlighter, a brighter light. So the sun may be coming in from the right. So we'll, because we have the snow on this side, we will lighten it up on that side. Good. You don't need to put it all over anymore. You just put it at the top a little bit. Maybe even a little bit at the edge of this one here, here. See? And if you want to go back a little bit more just to give it more shape, just move back a little bit and come back in again. See how that gives that nice little shape there? So you want to get nice shapes. Even go back in here and pick up some, some kind of like a misty look down here in the bottom. Okay, I think that's pretty nice. I might put a little bit of mist here too. It's just leftover paint. Softening it up, away to go. down here if you want. We're going to have a tree going over this anyway, so don't worry about that. But I didn't want it going all the way down like that, so I like it kind of it's that misty look. You like that? Isn't that pretty? Pretty simple, isn't it? But so let's put a, a hill over here or a mountain. So just go, I'm going to put all black. Just pure black for the underpainting, okay? And then we'll lay other colors on top. So we just need to get a shape so we will kind of like an angle make the letter a how's that make the letter a there we go and then we'll put a little a up there we'll fill it in fill it in Good. 
see the dark against the light. I'm going to take off this tape and I'm going to start working on the bottom while I'm waiting for all this to, to dry up here so we can work on the sky again. So I'm going to bring my other hill a little further down and I'm going to draw out where I want my land. So we got some land going on probably here. All right, and some of this is water and that's the hill there. Okay, so we're going to make a hill, a big um, Let's make that letter A again to make it easy. So we're going to go higher up this time. Alright, so we're just going to go put a little tap on there and we're going to come down. We have another one up here. As if you're making your letter A, see? Just trying to make it a bit easy so you don't have to be struggling with shapes. We'll fill that in. So whenever you're making shapes, try to think what, what letter does it look like? What number does it look like? Just something that you can work with, okay? So that's that hill there. And there's one up there. Looks funny in the beginning, doesn't it? You don't think it's ever going to work out. And sometimes that's the case. It can happen. I'm waiting for that. I am going to start working on these little hills over here. So these little hills, and make sure they're dry because they'll uh, absorb your nice bright colors. So these have to be dry. And we're just going to take a small round or filbert or flat brush and we're going to put some yellow on our brush, okay? A bit of yellow and a little tiny bit of burnt sienna. Just to start off, we'll put more highlights on it after we get that on. All right, so let's put that on here. A little bit in the background there. Just on the very edge, okay? And then here, good. So we are working on this over here. Make sure it's dry. I'm just getting some yellow together. I'm just going to get some yellow. I'm just going to sort of tap into my yellow and use my little flat brush to see if I can get these on here. Just on the very edge, just these little strokes. Pull back, pull back. We'll be lightening them up a little bit more in a minute. Just want to get something on there first. on the edge and pull in a little bit. Now, that much done. So I'm going to keep my brush dirty and I'm going to add some burnt sienna. I'm going to change brushes. Fan brushes are also excellent for putting on these little strokes. Let's try that. I'm going to use the corner of my brush. I'm putting some burnt sienna, some yellow, just to tone it down, get the kind of an orangey look to it, and white. I'm going to try that. So you want to have it nice and bright. So with the corner of that brush, I just put some some of the color on. I'm just going to see how much better that is because you get all these little separations. The flat brush kind of gives you just one flat blob. <laughs> Good. And now we're going to bring it over here a little bit. Just the corner of your brush is much easier to control. A little bit here and there. Now I'm going to pick up some more white 
really want that bright on the end there. Really bright. When it draws, we can put more on again. That might be a little bit too white. If it is, we'll just go back with some more yellow. It's the beauty. You can always go back and forth till you're happy. There we go. That really brightened up nicely, didn't it? For this side over here, it's pretty bright also, so I'm just putting together to get some darker tones. I'm putting together my yellow and my, 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 my burnt sienna and a little bit of red and some white. I don't want a pink. I want some more on the orangey side, so I'll get more yellow. All right, so yellow and burnt sienna looks really nice with a bit of white. You can add a bit of red if you want. So let's find out where we want this. Now we're going to pick out spots. We'll just pick out these spots that we want it, and then we can always go back in with other colors. Just try to get shapes right now. Let's start at the very end of use the corner of your brush. Or you can use um, as much of the brush as you want, as long as you're able to control it. I'm using all the brush here, and I'll just get this line down here and add a bit of color right here. I'm trying to get a little darker in this area, in between. I'm trying to get some shape. Make sure you leave some black in between so you can. All right, so you can, uh, let's see, let's see, where does that end? Let's end it. Now to make this, so staying with this brush here, I'm going to add a few more highlights to these edges here just to really brighten them up. I'm going to darken this a little bit here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a bit of burnt sienna and uh, black to make a burnt umber. So I'll just do that. And I'm going to put some of that in here because I find that contrast is not enough. So I really want to show you contrast in this painting. See when what happens when you add dark colors? Look at that. I'm just using the same brush you use my rocks. Make sure it's flat and a chiseled edge if you can get one. But see how look at how it makes that color stand out more now. Contrast, very important to get some really nice. Contrast means the black against the lighter colors, okay? Darks against lights. Look how nice that is now. See, it's much better, isn't it? And we could, I just picked up some burnt umber just to show you the difference. So burnt umber I'll put over here. And I'll put that in the crevices. I'm not changing anything. I'm just going back in where I already have darks. All right. So if it's not dark enough, add black. And adding color to your black makes your black work better instead of making mud or. Let's see if I get that right up here and a little bit here. And here. Just makes such a difference. All these little cracks. Look. Isn't that nice. It really um really shapes things up when you when you do this, right? So just because you did some work with your painting don't mean it's finished. You might still have lots of work to do. You want to go back in. And the beauty of it, once you get your basics done, you don't have to 
you're just going back over what you already did which means the hardest part is done now you can do all everything that you want on top of what you already done you don't have to change anything it makes it so much easier so that's that now I'm just going to add highlights so the highlights are your yellow and your burnt sienna so just yellow and burnt sienna okay so see yellow a little bit of burnt sienna I want to make it nice and bright so I'm just going to put this on first and maybe put another bit of, bit on but with white added to it alright so let's just get this much done first pick the spots don't go over the, no need to go over the black part or the really dark part, just over. Start at the top and as you come down, see the paint will wear off and then it will fade out a bit for you. You don't have to have too much then. You won't have too much, right? You can try a palette knife and you can try a fan brush if you want. Try all different brushes. I always say, you know, try different brushes. You don't have to use what I'm using. Experiment with your brushes and have fun with them. Don't, uh, and if you're doing small areas, you know yourself that you're going to need a smaller brush, right? So, small brush, a small area. Just trying to figure out the shape that I want. All right. So I'm going to add white now to what I just my burnt sienna and my yellow. I'm just going to add a bit of white so I can really brighten it up on certain parts, like here. Isn't that nice. See, just that little spot. I'm not doing much of anything. A little bit here. A little bit here. I'm hardly touching the canvas. I'm trying to be very careful so I don't make blobs. So it's a nice bright colors. I wipe off my brush. And I'm going to just uh, go back over these so that they don't look like just big yellow blobs. I want to make sure they look like they blend in with the painting. So I'm just going over the bottoms of them just to blend them in. Let's add a few here and there. Now that there's not much paint on your brush, you can move And I'm going to dip it in burnt umber and a little bit of black so I can make some crevices and things. Alright, so I'm just going to bring up. So bring up a line and then branch off somewhere. Alright, and make sure you get enough water on your brush so it'll move for you. So let's say we got some crevices in here. See that helps 
give it some realistic look to it. It's always little cracks in, in your rocks, okay? Whenever you're doing rocks, stones, hills, whatever, if you do this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give it more detail. And it'll break things up, especially if you got a, you know, you got a lot of paint on there and it looks like blobs or you just didn't get it right. Leave your blobs and then go through it with these little crevices. And it gives it a more realistic look, see? It helps. It all helps when you know all these techniques and that you can use them in your paintings. And every time you do rocks and hills and mountains, you can do the same technique for all of them. And, uh, and it'll create your own style then too, right? And people will say, wow, look at all that detail. Look at all those little cracks in the rocks. So what I'm doing is making a line. I'm, I'm branching off, just like if you were making a tree. Tree branches, right? It's all the same techniques. All the same techniques that you use for your trees and clouds. They can be used in so many other areas. So, I think the next thing we'll do is the mountains, okay? So, the mountains, and we'll put this orangey colors on after we put the mountains on. So, we'll just put those mountains on, and uh, maybe we could draw them out first to see what kind of heights we want, to see the, the shapes that we want. So, just take a pencil, that's a pencil, and decide maybe a um, a nice lift up here. We don't want it too tall because then it'll, it'll overpower the painting, okay? So I'll just, uh, you guys just make some nice little humps. It's not going to be exactly what I had on my other painting. This painting is going to be a little bit like the other one, but it's going to be different because I can't paint the same painting exactly tw this twice. It's very difficult for anybody to paint a painting twice and have it exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller flat brush and maybe we'll take this sable brush. Okay, It's a chiseled edge brush, soft, but it still bounces back. Boink. See. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some orangey color. So we're going to take some yellow and some red. Okay, yellow and red, and a bit of blue, a little bit of brown, gray it up. Blue and brown gives nice grays and blacks. And now we're going to take some white, and we're going to change the value of that color. Now it's too brown for me. I wanted a more grayish color, so I'm going to add more blue. Okay. At least you can see what I'm doing anyway. So that way you can you can make up your own paintings and like I say everybody does their paintings their own way and color mixing is is really nice because you get some really nice colors when you mix the proper colors together so just put in your color there we go just fill in your mountains fill in your mountains after we get this done now the mountains then I'm going to um, get ready for another video to finish off get ready for other things so we'll do these mountains first so just get your base color down first okay and I'm just I'm even throwing in a little bit more white because you can have different shades it doesn't have to be exactly the same one color all the time that's what I like I like doing different shades uh, in my paintings I, I don't uh, have one big amount of color even when I'm doing grass trees, anything at all, I just take go back and mix up whatever comes out, then I'll use it. So, some people like to make a big mixture of one color and then use that, which is fine for big paintings and something you're doing, a different type of painting. So I'm just laying this on here. Don't worry about the tops right now. And I'm just going to put in more 
I'm just laying it in. I'm just playing around with it now, okay? This is a bit lighter. The value has changed to a lighter color that I did. And now you can bring it back again if you want to. More blue. Get a little bit more gray. There we go. And then just go and put that in. Whoops. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, then we go and get this over. See how I got the different shades of everything in there? See? So don't stick to one shade. Don't stick to one value of color. Mix it in a bit. So what we'll do, uh, yeah, we'll try the sable brush for now, okay? So I may change my mind. So we get some orange. We have to go over that beautiful sky with some mountains. Now, let's be very careful because mountains are not that simple, are they? Although I showed you a simple way to do them. But what I'm going to show you is another simple way. It's the same thing. So we're going to take our dark colors, so our ultramarine blue, some black, maybe a bit of red. You don't want it to be too black and green. You know, just add some colors, dark colors. Mix them all up and see what you get. We want a nice dark color, though. There we go. That's pretty. Isn't it pretty? Well, it's black, but it's, it's not as black as black. So what we'll do is, we will make some shapes first. We'll decide. Now the mountain's not going to be exactly the same as the one that's on the picture, but we'll do our best, you know. So here's the painting. There's the mountains. All right. We're going to make them, you know, as best we can. Not easy to get the shape unless you completely copy it. So I will. I will, I will. Ooh, scary. <laughs> Okay, the mountains come up to about here. I'm going to make a little dead there, just to be, sh just not to go too far up. And maybe I'll make another little one here, a little one here. So just make some marks of where you want your, where you want your mountain. So let's take this and pull it up to this. Okay. Oh, this is scary, isn't it? <laughs> oh my. And then I'm going to take another little one up here, pull up, and this one here is going to have to be a little bit higher, I think. So you can change things, we're okay, but you're using black paint, so you don't want to ruin your painting. So be very careful. I hope you don't run into any trouble. Um, and then you come down to this one. And then you have a little peak here, and then we will move down here. And you can also add more peaks if you want to after you get it done. Now that's not too bad. Now like I said, it's not exactly the same as the other one, but we will we'll, we'll work with it. Now we'll fill it in. It's starting to look better already. So pull it to the right, to the right, to the right. That will help you get some shape to your, all right? You can use a chisel edge or you can just pull down like that on the full. All right, whoops, look, see what I did? I made a mess. All right, so, good. If you're right-handed, you probably just pull down the same thing. You do basically the same thing, so just do it with your right hand. But some right-handed people start in the opposite of, of what I'm doing. So, if you got problems, like I said, your right hand, you should be able to still make your mark up like that, right? Still put it out like that. I did it like this. And then you just Push it in like that, and now look at that. A little bit of right-handed stuff going on there. All right, now, what we're going to do to make sure that our mountains look good and we get the right shapes, we are going to make our squiggly lines. So you can shape them up if you've got problems, okay? They don't come out right, just fix them up. 
I know some people has a lot of trouble with mountains. I try my best to make them as easy as I can for you. Alright. And a little peek peeking out there. Alright, so now let's use our squiggly lines to get the right shapes. So all you need for that is, I'm going to use my liner brush. I'm going to wet it and I'm going to dip it in some white paint. I'm just going to put it through some white paint just so I can get some squiggly lines. And make sure it's not dripping with water because sometimes water gets up here and then just pours down and now let's take the peaks. Let's find the peaks. Okay, so there's a peak right here, right? So take that and make a squiggly line. Alright, there's a squiggly line. And there's a squiggly line. Now you can't see that one, so I'm gonna do it again. Alright. Now we'll do another one. Top of the peak. And make a squiggly knot, doesn't matter, you come over here, you go over there, as long as it's squiggly, okay? And a nice one right here. So I might move it over a little bit over here. I can always change it too, so you can always change it. Don't have to be, but this is a really good guide to help you get your mountains in a good shape. Alright, and, and I'm not sure about this one. I'll put a little bit of a squiggly line there to see what we're going to do with it. Okay, now we got the squigglies. Okay, I'm going to use my fan brush to put on my highlights on my mountain. And I am going to, because I, I, if you do a, a, a knife and it doesn't work, if you can do a knife, you go right ahead, okay? Um, I tried a knife and I didn't get the look I was looking for. So I might sneak that in there somewhere. I, I, I tried it, I didn't like it, I took it out. So now I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to put a, some titanium white, a little tiny bit of blue, a little tiny bit of red in my paint, would you believe? And this is going to be our highlight. All right, should be pretty. That should be pretty. So if you're right-handed, um, if you're right-handed, well, if you're right-handed, if you're right-handed, pull down like this. Just stand on the left side and start pulling down this way, and that way you'll get the same technique. So I'm going on the chiseled edge, and I'm pulling down, and I'm not going to cover up everything. I want to, I want some of the dark to show through. Use your squiggly line to help you. And we'll add highlights and things after, but we want to get this on first. There's your squiggly line. Pick up some more white if you need it. I'm not pushing very hard because I don't want to cover up all that blue that I got there. Or that, I'm sorry, that dark color that I have there, the mountain color. Go. And we'll put some more over that. We'll just leave it as it is for now, like that. Pick up some more color. A little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a bit of white. Good. Some shadow up here. Want some up here. Follow your squiggly line, leave open some spots. If we end up putting too much on there, we can always we can always uh, go back with some darks after. Okay. Just very gentle. And a little bit in here. See how, how those squiggly lines just give you such really nice shapes. Squiggly line here. Follow that. That will help you. And here. So 
I'm leaving the I'm leaving the darks between on purpose. Might need a little more white picked up. Corner your brush, fine. Nice. Might add a little more white here. So you can go back and forth and, and fill in the spots that you want more weight. And what we'll do now is we will clean up clean up the edges there. All right, so let's get a brush. Might darken a little bit by adding a little bit of burnt sienna to my yellow. Don't need very much. Just a little tiny bit of burnt sienna added to that yellowy color. Just to darken it up a little tiny bit. I don't want to overdo it because it's too pretty as it is. Just kind of give some definition to the, to the sky, that's all. Perfect. Now we're going to put some little hills down here. I'm just going to add, use a small filbert, but you can use a small flat. Because the only reason I'm using a filbert is because it's handy. <laughs> and uh, But if you've got a flat, a flat you may want to use. But I like the fact that this has a bit of a round top on it and it can help me make some nice uh, hills. So I'm going to make some background hills and there's going to be they're going to be fairly light. So we're going to take some, let me see, let me see. I'm going to take, I'm just going to take a bit of burnt sienna. I've got a messy palette. My palettes are always messy. I don't mind that as long as I know where the colors go and what colors I want to use. So I'm just going to kind of burnt sienna and green and a little bit of red mixed in with that. That's fine. And some white to really lighten it up. This will be my background hills. Okay. I want them light so that um, so they look far away. So we'll just make some hills. We will go, we gotta make the background ones big enough so we can put some in the front. So we'll just make some hills like this. Small one, small one, a little bigger, a little higher, a little. And we'll darken it up so you can see it. I don't mind them being that light, but I want you to be able to see them too. I'm just going to fill that in. Okay, so that's a bit too light, dark. I'm going to clean that up. Clean up my brush. I had too much paint on my brush. There we go. That's better. So I want them nice and light. Oh, I tell you, the blending is amazing. It's amazing. I can't say it enough. You are going to be so happy. I don't think you're going to be able to paint without it after this. Very addictive. Painting is addictive as enough as it is. Now we got something else that's going to make us even more addictive. So we got that now, and I'm going to say that the light, if there's going to be some light coming in through here, probably here, and so there's going to be light. So I'm going to add a little bit of white, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to this edge here, just to give it a, a mountain shape. See how it shapes up the mountain when you do that? See? I don't want to put too much on right now. We can always add some more after. Now what we want to do is put the darker ones on the bottom. So I'm going to add green. I'm going to get my green and my burnt sienna. I'm going to use that color for my other mountains underneath what I got done. So they will be smaller, so just go up like this. It's 
these are just hills in the front. There we go. They'll make sense now when we take the, the tape off, okay? Just get the shapes that you want. Make some smaller and some taller. Okay? So you can make these a little bigger. Might bring that over here. So you can change the shapes. Don't worry. There we go. So just put on a bunch at first and then you can shape them up after because it helps get your shapes better. And then we're going to take some yellow or some white, I'm sorry. Let me see, maybe yellow. Um, yeah, maybe some yellow. Let's take some yellow and add that to the edge here. As you can see, I make it up as I go along. <laughs> sort of make up the colors as I go along, but you can pre-plan your colors, you don't have to uh, you certainly want to make sure the colors match and make sure if you're doing distant hills that you're not black or you know what I mean, like you still need to do some kind of planning you have to plan where the light is coming in, things like that, you know so light is coming in through the center here, somewhere around here and it's going to come out and the bottom of the sky is pretty light so so make your brush really, really clean. Make sure there's nothing on it, and because you want pure white, we want to make a put some sun. Let's put it here. I think it'd be nice because you don't want dead center, because then you lose the interest. So pick up some white, and you probably got some and a little bit of yellow. Don't matter, and just brighten up that little area here, because that's where the sun is coming in here. We'll just add a little bit of light there and a little bit of light here. All right, I will come back to that because I want to see. I want to, I want to see what I want to do with it. You know, I don't want to do too much with it yet till, because some things are better left until last. Because if you do it too fast, you might not like it, and then you got to do a lot of work. All right, good. So we'll take our. Well, thank you for painting along with me. I hope you enjoyed that painting and if you did enjoy that painting leave a comment below in the comment section let me know what you liked about that painting what part of that painting did you like what was your favorite part and if you have any questions about brushes or paints or anything about the painting itself just email me at alisonpryor at yahoo.com or leave a comment down below I will see you in the next video.